This is the eggplant commodity system analysis made by the group Get Along. So here is the commodity system analysis framework and we'll begin by the overview. Eggplant, or Solana melangona, is believed to have originated from India and China. Since prehistoric times, eggplant has been domesticated in different parts of Asia. It is said to have been distributed to countries in Asia, like the Philippines, by natural resources. Eggplant is considered a major fruit vegetable in the world. The global production exceeds 31 million metric tons. The top five producing countries of eggplant are China, India, Egypt, Turkey, and Iran. The Philippines currently ranks the ninth. Since, in, since its introduction, eggplant has become a stable vegetable in many Filipino households. The crop is considered as one of the most economically important vegetables of the country. Currently, with a total of 21,226 hectares, eggplant is considered the number one vegetable in the Philippines in terms of production area. The average yield is at 9.95 tons per hectare. Eggplant is planted in all 17 regions of the Philippines, with Ilocos, Pangasinan, Central Luzon, and the Southern Tagalog regions as the top producers. Eggplants are low in calories and fats and contain mostly water. This vegetable is said to be a good source of vitamins, fibers, and minerals. Because of this, it is used as an alternative medicine by Filipinos. Eggplants are believed to be helpful in treating illnesses such as ulcerations, diabetes, bronchitis, and several other diseases. In addition to its medical uses, this crop also aids in the addressing of food security. The current production volume of the Philippines can feed millions of people. Moreover, eggplant farming helps alleviate poverty. At present, there are about 40,000 eggplant farmers in the Philippines. For the input sector, the main inputs needed by the farmers to produce eggplants are mainly seeds, fertilizers, and agrochemicals. At present, there are 16 recognized developed seed varieties of eggplants. These seeds are supplied by five major suppliers, namely Pilipinas Caneco, Allied Botanical, Keystone, Ramgo International Corporation, and East West Seed Company. Eggplants can be planted all year long. It thrives in sandy loam and clay loam soils with a pH value of 5.5 to 6.8. It needs only 35 to 40 millimeters of water weekly and has to maintain a temperature of 20 to 30 degrees during its growth. For the use of fertilizers, it is recommended to apply 125 to 150 kilograms of nitrogen, 100 to 250 kilograms of phosphorus, and 100 to 250 kilograms of potassium to a one hectare land. The eggplant fruit and shoot border, known as the EFSP, is the pest that at its worst can lead to the 80% yield loss in production. Farmers use insecticides and pesticides to control these. However, these chemicals prove to be harmful to the farmers as well. Both fertilizers and agrochemicals are sourced from abroad. In total, the amount of money spent for inputs per hectare of land is 27,160 pesos. The farm sector. According to the data provided by the Philippine Statistics Authority, the total area planted for eggplant was 21,800 hectares. The volume reached at 249.9 thousand metric tons and it is valued at 6,254.4 million pesos. The latest report by the PSA regarding the crop statistics of the Philippines was from 2014 to 2018. Figure 1 shows the volume of eggplant production with an average rate of 2.1% growth annually. Data shows the year 2014 with 225,518 metric tons and continues to increase until 2018 with 244,840 metric tons. Due to the increasing number of farms devoted to eggplant production, the land area planted also expanded from 21,450 hectares in 2017 to 21,650,000 hectares in 2018 with an average annual growth rate of 0.6%. This graph portrays the different regions that were involved with eggplant production in 2018. 
the largest producer was the Locos region, which contributed to 38.1% or 93,190 metric tons. Around 22.6% of shares came from other regions, followed by Calabarzon, Central Luzon, Cagayan Valley, and Western Visayas. Annual farm gate prices per kilogram of eggplant from the year 1990 to 2019 is illustrated in Figure 3, and it can be observed how prices vary within those periods. The two varieties of eggplant indicated on the data are the long purple and the native brown. The price of the long purple eggplants increased from 6 pesos per kilogram in 1990 and had its highest at 27 pesos in 2018. The date of the native round variety started in 2001, and it initially costs 10 pesos and had its peak in 2018, amounting to 34 pesos per kilogram. Let us proceed to the cultural management practices. There are a few steps to consider in land preparation to ensure successful eggplant production. The field must be plowed and harrowed for the removal of weeds. The selection of seeds to be planted is very influential in eggplant production. Thus, in selecting varieties, it has to be high-yielding, resistant to insect pests and diseases, non-seasonal, adapted to local climatic conditions, and acceptable to consumers. Seedlings are hardened and then the field is covered in mulch. Mulching is usually applied to control weeds, conserve soil moisture, prevent soil erosion, leaching of fertilizers, and reflects the sunlight which in result repel insect pests hiding under the leaves. After this, the application of fertilizer on the field is important. The utilization of complete fertilizer, the 14-14-14, with equal amounts of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus provide the healthy environment and optimal and rapid growth for the eggplant. When the field is prepped and ready, the seedlings are now transplanted. During the growth stage, pest management such as the application of pesticides, insecticides, and the manual removal of pests are done. Regular hand weeding must be practiced to ensure that all the soil nutrients are absorbed by the crops and not by the weeds. It is recommended to harvest crops during daytime and must be handled gently to avoid being damaged. The harvested crops are then packed in sacks and shipped to nearby markets. Let us now proceed with the processing sector. The eggplant is considered a high-value crop in the Philippines. According to the Global Sourcing Hub, Tridge, the Philippines ranks 9th in the top producing countries of eggplants worldwide. The global production share is 0.5% in 2018, which amounts to a production quantity of 244.84 thousand tons. Despite the prolific production performance of the Philippines, the country's limited capacity to transform fresh produce into value-added products has brought the value of eggplants down on the global market. The country's export share of value-added eggplants is equivalent to 0.0%. In the Philippines, eggplants are consumed as fresh produce rather than its processed form. For this reason, there are limited processed eggplant products in the market. The most common processed form of eggplant is the pickled eggplant, or the acharang talong in Tagalog. A jar costs 100 to 150 pesos. Pate and antipasto are Italian appetizers that are also available here in the Philippines. This particular brand sells both at 257 pesos each. In the USA, a brand called Dominex produces meat-free, frozen processed products inspired by fast food dishes. Their eggplant line consists of eggplant cutlets, veggie fries, and veggie meatballs. Mediterranean countries have long incorporated eggplant in their cuisine. For this reason, they were able to formulate different value-added products for the market. This includes eggplant dips, spreads, jams, caviar, roasted eggplant, and creamy eggplant. In South Korea, a brand named Papa's Recipe recently launched a line of products made from eggplant extract which is specially formulated for people with sensitive skin. The products offered are clearing cream, emulsion, pool, cleansing foam, and mud cream mask, and they all offer a variety of skin benefits such as anti-acne power and inflammation control. Due to the few processed products that Filipinos are familiar with, most operations occur in small-scale businesses. The businesses are often SMEs, and their market is only within the neighborhood or town. 
As mentioned, the Philippine market continues to prefer consuming fresh eggplants. For this reason, wide-scale companies in the agribusiness field produce eggplants in such a way that their freshness is not compromised. Gizon Farms, a local agribusiness company, sells freshly harvested quality eggplants to major supermarkets and institutional buyers such as hotels and restaurants. Another company, the Cisco Foods Corporation, sells pre-cut vegetables to institutional buyers and restaurants. The GTGF Food Corporation is a company that sells local packed fresh produce in supermarkets in Metro Manila. We are now moving on to the marketing sector. The first thing that we're going to discuss is the marketing channel of eggplant in the Philippines. The figure being shown here came from a study that was conducted in Batangas, Pagasinan, and Quezon. It starts off with the farmers. The produce of these farmers are distributed among three types of sellers. The first one is called the assembler, wholesaler, retailer. This type of seller has the capability to grow their own produce as well as sell in bulk or in retail. On the other hand, the wholesaler retailer can only sell in bulk or in retail. Lastly, the retailers can only sell in retail. 70% is controlled by the assembler, wholesaler, retailer, while the remaining 30% is managed by the retailers only. Using this type of system, the produce of the farmers eventually end up in the hands of the consumers. The next one is the marketing strategy adopted by producers and traders. Here, we're going to discuss the four P's, which are product, price, place, and promotion. We're going to start off with the product. Eggplant is available all year round, and it is widely available in stalls, in local markets, and roadside stands. Next, for the place, Divisoria, which is located in Metro Manila, is known to be the top eggplant market, while the major producing eggplant provinces are Pangasinan, Cavite, and Batangas. For the price, eggplant costs 70 pesos per kilo in wholesale, while it is 80 pesos per kilo in retail. This data was gathered from the Philippine Statistics Authority. Last October 2020, the price of eggplant is highly influenced by the prevailing market price as well as the demand and supply situation. For the promotion, here are the benefits that eggplant is known to have. First, it prevents diabetes, cancer, as well as gastrointestinal diseases. Additionally, it is a good source of water, fiber, vitamins and minerals, and antioxidants. As for the marketing costs and margin, the data being shown here is the cost and return analysis of one hectare of eggplant farm. The gross income can reach 400,000 pesos, while the net income can go as high as 292,475 pesos, and the return on investment can reach a whopping 272%. Having a positive return on investment means that the gain profit is high and it also indicates that the eggplant industry is efficient. Next one is the price trends. This figure shows the average retail price and farm gate price of eggplant in the Philippines, specifically in Central Luzon in 2019. The red line represents the farm gate price, while the blue line represents the retail price. From this figure, we can see that the price of eggplant is continuously increasing despite some setbacks. Ultimately, for the demand and supply situation, the figure being shown here shows the volume of eggplant in the Philippines from the year 2011 to 2019. Just like the price of the eggplant, the volume is also generally increasing over the years, which is a good indicator that the eggplant industry is thriving. And that sums up the marketing sector of eggplant. The support sector, agro-services, are composed of the institutions that support the eggplant industry, the development programs and policies, and investment priorities in the same industry, as well as the other agro-services. First, the institutions supporting the commodity system. The institutions that are working together to ensure that the eggplant commodity system will become prosperous are 
First, the Department of Agriculture or DA. They're responsible for empowering the agricultural sector by providing projects, policy frameworks, public investment, and other support services that the eggplant farmers would need. Second, University of the Philippines Los Baños or UPLB, which conducts studies regarding the improvement of eggplant cultivation as well as creating better varieties of eggplant. Third, Philippines Agricultural Training Institute, an agency that is still under the Department of Agriculture, which aims to train the farmers based on the techniques and methods that several researches and studies have proven to be more effective. And lastly, the Agribusiness and Marketing Assistant or AMAS, which provides feasibility studies and trade and production data to our farmers. On the other hand, the development programs and projects that are being conducted by different agencies, universities and colleges, and local universities are, first, distribution of seeds this pandemic to intensify urban agriculture, which was facilitated by DA through its Bureau of Plant Industry and mainly conducted in Metro Manila and other urban areas. Two, study of insect resistant genetically modified DTA eggplants that was conducted by the researchers from UPLB and Cornell University that aims to produce type of eggplant that reduces the damage effects of pests, increases yield, and decreases production costs. Three, production improvement of information, education, and communication or IEC materials as well as using IEC materials in developing biocontrol agents. Four, Improvement of recommended varieties for off-season crops and protect protective cultivation which aims to provide profit for the farmers despite the weather conditions. 5. Implementation of an appropriate and effective post-harvest system that is conducted by investing in storage technologies and systems. 6. Application of sustainable value chain development to address the insufficient value chains. And lastly, mechanization of labor-intensive activities and provision of low-cost productive structures and water and fertilizer recommendation. The areas of concern for investment priorities consist of the implementation of the phase two of smart approaches to reinvigorate agriculture as industry of Sarai that generally aims to expand the operation of Sarai to involve more crops and incorporate the economic aspect to address the growing uncertainties of changing prices regarding sustainable agriculture crop production with an investment target of 5 million pesos, and the development of improved plant varieties with new plant defense genes for multiple insect resistance using innovative technologies that set a goal to develop a well-characterized Philippine eggplant germplasm collection and database for local and global eggplant community with an investment target of 5,234,921 pesos and expected to be finished by the end of 2022. In other agri-services, the areas of concern are implementing new lending programs as well as conditional cash transfers and credit assistance to farmers stealing one half to two hectares of land and the high lending interest rates in financing institutions with an increase of 0.98% in 2019. Let's now discuss the integrated analysis. For the input subsector, the strengths are the availability of high quality seeds and other services locally, and the availability of insecticides and pesticides abroad. For the weaknesses, the effects of insecticides on farmers are harmful and the contribution to the greenhouse gases are relatively high. For the opportunities, there is an increase in population that can lead to a demand in the inputs and there is a, a continuous development of new varieties. Let us now discuss the SWOT analysis for the farm sector. Manpower and the vast expense of land area dedicated to eggplant production are the main strengths. These results to higher and globally competitive yield. Unfortunately, the susceptibility of eggplants to EFSB and the damage during harvesting decreases yield. There is high investment costs in this business 
and our farmers are not aware of the latest and best technologies and practices in farming. However, the consolidation of fragmented farmlands can lead to a higher crop yield once implemented. Events such as flooding and the recurring unstable peace and order in Mindanao pose threats in the production of eggplants in our country. Let's go over to the SWOT analysis of the processing sector. The processing sector provides jobs in MSMEs and it doesn't require further spending for the different actors along the supply chain. Unfortunately, there are limited wide-scale eggplant processing companies. This results to a few number of value-added products in the market. However, there is a wide array of opportunities in creating value-added products of eggplants. These can range from food products to even skincare. Next is the SWOT analysis for the marketing sector. Its strengths include eggplant being a staple vegetable in the Philippines and in Asia. Philippines is known as a major eggplant producer, an all-year-round production, and it can be sold in pinakbet bundles. On the contrary for its weaknesses, inadequate packaging for produce since most of our producers and farmers still rely on plastic as their packaging which is bad for the environment and can also affect the quality of the eggplant after harvest. Next, financial constraint of farmers lead to inability to access cold chain facilities such as cold storage and reefer vans. Lastly, lack of entrepreneurial skills which include having poor organizational skills and lack of motivation. As for its threats, limited access to reliable market information, which means that our farmers cannot correctly price their produce, which may lead to exploitative situations, and other countries is also a threat since they are our competitors in the export industry. The Department of Agriculture, University of the Philippines Los Banos, and the Philippines Agricultural Training Institute are the institutions that supported the eggplant industry. In addition to that, the Agribusiness and Marketing Assistance also provides data to farmers. These institutions are spreads in the industry. Another strength is the continuous research and development conducted by these institutions to increase efficiency of production. Moreover, the projects and investments that would benefit the industry is also a strength. An opportunity can be through partnerships with local government units and public schools in providing healthy and nutritious meals to their citizens and students. For the weaknesses, the vision for the apple industry is nearsighted. Unlike the Netherlands, the Philippines currently has no plan for a circular economy. And lastly, for the threats of the industry, the high lending interest rates of financial institutions are a concern. Additionally, the other countries such as Spain and Netherlands, both of which are large producers of eggplant, are a threat as they are widely supported by institutions. In conclusion, these are the following problems faced by the Philippine eggplant industry. Post-harvest handling and storage issues. Proper packaging and cold storage facilities are needed in the industry. But due to the financial limitations of farmers, inadequate packaging, and poor road conditions in the country, the quality of produce gets affected, which further leads to losses. Pests as a major threat to the eggplant industry Eggplant fruit and shoot borer is known to be the most destructive pest, therefore leading to the excessive use of pesticides. It causes negative impacts not only to the environment, but to human health as well. Pesticides also add up to the total cost of production. Global competitiveness of Philippine exports The country could still work on improving its exports, especially in terms of value-added goods. Due to the country's land area and volume of eggplant production, it can compete with its neighboring countries that offer processed eggplant goods. However, there are only a few eggplant processing companies and MSMEs in the country that are engaged in the industry. Technological advancements. The country is still lacking in terms of resources and technology for developments. Additionally, some players still lack the skills and knowledge to further work on improving the industry. For the recommendations, cooperative agreements between public and private sectors. 
The cooperation of both parties is essential in each sector for the development of concrete plans that are more efficient and feasible in the long run. Commercialization of BT Eggplant It would be a competitive advantage for the country once the BT Eggplant is commercially released, as it is said to be highly profitable due to the reduction of pesticide use and increase in marketable yield. Development of Eggplant Processing Industry There are still ways to make eggplant production more cost-effective by starting to create various value-added goods of eggplant. Since the Philippines produces high volume of eggplant, it has the capability to cater value-added goods once the processing industry has been developed. Focusing on this industry will create more opportunities for the country due to its potential in both local and international markets as one of the major producers of eggplant. Government Support The country is still lacking in terms of technical knowledge, skills, resources, and technologies, so there must be enough assistance given by government institutions or with the support of private sectors by allocating funds and providing training programs to further improve the industry and its key players. Digital Technology An application called BT Begone was released by Feed the Future South Asia Eggplant Improvement Partnership in Bangladesh to cater sources of information for BT eggplant farmers and stakeholders. It provides reliable information made accessible to the public about the genetically modified crop. The application includes a frequently asked questions section in order to address all the questions and myths regarding the genetically modified crop video tutorials, planting tips, growing and harvesting guide of, of BT eggplant can also be found on the application for the users to learn more about the whole process, from seed purchasing to harvesting. The users can also input details such as sowing date, area planted, seed source, and harvest. Additionally, farmers can also seek advice from experts by posting their concerns on the application. Launching an application like BT Begone will significantly help promote BT eggplant or processed eggplant goods and guide the players in the whole value chain in the Philippines. Considering that is now the fourth agricultural revolution, the Philippines need to focus more on technological advancements to improve the country's agricultural performance. The use of blockchain technology will open a great deal of opportunities and benefits for the eggplant industry since it promotes transparency and traceability. In this way, all the players of the value chain get to record data and access information. It would be a huge advantage for the Philippine eggplant industry to consider these emerging technologies because of the country's potential in terms of production. This is the proposed CSA framework of eggplant in the Philippines, wherein government agencies such as Department of Agriculture, Institute of Plant Breeding, Department of Science and Technology, and Department of Trade and Industry are assigned in corresponding sectors in order to provide all the support and assistance that is needed by the key players in the industry. The figure portrays a more detailed marketing channel for fresh fruits and vegetables that can also be applied to the eggplant industry in the Philippines. This provides an in-depth overview of all the players, organizations, and activities involved in the whole process that is beneficial in addressing marketing problems and improving strategies in the industry. Due to the land area and volume of eggplant production in the Philippines, it has the potential to offer more value-added goods in the market. Therefore, this vegetable value chain can also be adopted by the Philippine eggplant industry, as it portrays a more detailed and comprehensive flow from inputs to the end market. So that concludes our commodity analysis report on eggplant. If you have any concerns or questions, you can send an email to epbarines at up.edu.ph. Thank you for listening.